very good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the session on how to secure, centralize, and automate your file transfers using Go Anywhere MFT. I am Sarin Nainan, Product Manager for Go Anywhere MFT at Bulwark Technologies. I am here with my co-host Gideon Wilkins, EMEA part Partner Manager at Help Systems and Shibu Kurian, who is a technical consultant at Bulwark Technologies. Welcome, Gideon. Hello there. Welcome. Thanks, Gideon. Welcome, Shibu. Hi. Hi, everyone. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that the session is being recorded. So if you would like to rewatch any portions or share it with a colleague, you can do so. We will send out a link to the recording within a day or so after the session. So during this session, we shall discuss on the common file transfer challenges, and we will explore the benefits of using the managed file transfer solution. So here is the agenda today. First, we shall go through a quick introduction to help systems and bulwark. Then we shall move ahead with the challenges of the legacy file transfers and why you should consider a secure managed file transfer in your organization, followed by case studies in various verticals. And finally, we will cover a live demo of the Go Anywhere MFT with various use cases. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to enter those in the chat window and we shall address those during the session. And if there are any questions that are not answered, we shall get back to you soon. All right, so I shall start with a quick introduction about Bulwark Technologies. Bulwark Technologies is an award-winning specialized cybersecurity VAD in the region. We started our operations in 1999 and has celebrated 20 successful years of cybersecurity excellence in the region. We are a privately held organization and profitable since the year one. We're also proud to say that we represent 22 plus vendors and, and their complete product and service portfolio under various domains of cybersecurity. We are operational across the GCC countries and in India and have 500 plus partners who are our extended arms across the region. We also believe that their capabilities combined with others makes us more than when we are alone. So we have a strong and long-standing relationship with Go Anywhere MFT since 2014. The Go Anywhere MFT was part of Linoma software, which was later acquired by Help Systems in 2016. Now coming to our MFT team at Bulwark, we have a dedicated sales, marketing, and technical team to support our partners and customers. Last but not the least, we are also proud to inform you that we have four certified technical engineers who are the pillars of Go Anywhere MFT at Bulwark. So that is a, a small introduction about Bulwark. And with that, I would like to pass it on to Gideon. Gideon, over to you. Thank you very much, Sarin. Hi, my name's Gideon Wilkins. And as, uh, as you saw on the slide, I'm the partner manager for help systems for the Middle East and Africa. So I just want to spend a few minutes just positioning help systems and, and the uh, managed file transfer market before I go into anything specifically about Go Anywhere, which is our MFT product. So the first thing is that you know our mission is to help build a better IT. That's uh, four little words and a very, very big project. So, you know, the, the reason we have an arrow underneath that is this is a journey. This is not a destination. We will never wake up and say, thank goodness we've achieved our goal. IT is is now perfect. Um, but But we do believe that there is a better and less complex approach to IT. We all know that today we have thousands of companies uh, with hundreds of technologies, the companies try to figure out which is the best to buy them, to deploy them, to try and make them work and interoperate uh, with each other. 
and you know quite honestly it, it, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue so at help systems we decided that we would focus on a couple of core areas and try to improve the user's lot the customer's lot so we believe that all companies should have access to the quality of business tools that are traditionally enjoyed by large global in enterprises um, and we also believe that IT should be usable and not so complex that you need to be some kind of Jedi master to be able to install it and manage it on a day to day basis. So we focus, we focus on the areas we believe we can improve and make better and, and deliver a difference today. And we do not try to be everything to everybody. So, you know, we don't claim to have the golden bullet that if you buy this product all your problems have gone away so what are we well we're also a privately held company we've been going for over 35 years now we're based in uh, in the US we have over 18,000 customers globally and they cover every virtual uh, sorry every uh, uh, industry segment that you can think of ranging from central governments and central security organizations through large global multinational manufacturing and finance companies down to small um, solicitor firms uh, you know th there isn't anybody that could not be a customer for help systems we have about 260 million revenues uh, in 2019 in revenues and we have a strong business plan to grow that to uh, 575 million by the end of 2023 and obviously to do that there's going to be a number of acquisitions we are a very acquisitive company we've acquired 26 companies since 2005 started off with very small acquisitions very niche um, pre-IPO technologies and you know, the last one that we made was a company called ClearSwift which is a market leader in uh, redactive DLP technologies. Um, we have uh, over 900 staff and we have offices in 25 countries around the world. The important thing to note is that outside of North America our primary go-to-market model is through partners so we are very very partner centric. Now, let's have a little look at uh, what are the four common file transfer challenges. People need to move data around. It's always been thus. It used to be a parchment or a letter, then it became a memo, then it became an email, and today is no different. And in fact, with the, with the uh, pandemic that we're all enjoying being locked down on for the last various number of months depending on where you are um, you know this type of communication has become even more important so you know the, the challenge with it today is that there's a lot of old technology out there still being used FTP as a standard product is data sent in the clear people have got PC tools single function products or even manual processes uh, some companies had enough uh, IT resources to be able to write scripts and you know programmers are needed to try and create a workflow to to send files around and you know passwords stored in the clear so it was a very um, uh, unfriendly business tool IT could just about set up FTP servers but the average user couldn't they just sent emails or as we moved into the cloud to get round the restrictions they started putting it onto sending it to their own email or putting it onto a USB key um, processes are are very time consuming if somebody's got to write a script they're manually writing it for every single action and somebody has to keep those up to date if you write a script that says to go and look for a file in a certain location and two years later somebody decides to move that location file somewhere else you have to rewrite the script and uh, you hope that the same guy's there who knows what he's doing and control it was too decentralized nobody knew nobody had a single view of the whole process um, huge number of error alerts uh, or audit logs to meet compliance rules um, you know in many cases there were none and in other cases there were too many very difficult to see when a process breaks where exactly did it break and employees were were still sending um, 
uh, still sending files unchecked. You know, all of these guys working at home today, they're asked to do things and they will find a way to do it. So if they want to send a very large file and it won't go through their corporate VPN and firewall, they'll find a way around it. They'll use a Dropbox, they'll use a Gmail, they'll, they'll just find a way, they'll even put it onto a USB and post it to somebody anything to try and keep their job going forward which is which is great except for the fact that you have zero visibility of what is happening within your organization and therefore you've got no chance of being compliant so what is managed file transfer Let, let's be clear this is a category so traditional file transfer methods have been as we've said ftp email or in not in the near near distant past, sending things up into a Dropbox type facility, and that is not what MFT is about. All right, MFT. The definition of MFT is it's a managed file transfer. It must have the following components. It must be automated. It must be secure, e.g., encrypted. It must be centralized, and it must have an enterprise level approach and it must be auditable if you doesn't have all of those components it's not mft so you know any solution that you decide to go and look at you need to make sure that it has those five elements in it that you're happy with automation encryption security auditing and compliance so why why managed file transfer well because it does tick all those boxes you do need secure file exchange management you do need a centralized administration you do need full traceability and control and you do need automation so our solution to that at help systems uh, and working with bulwark is go anywhere go anywhere is the product name it is our managed file transfer platform but it's actually more than just a managed file transfer platform it's actually a data migration platform in as much as it has at the top there in that blue central box it has a bunch of features and those are features that we've touched on and you'd expect folder monitors scheduling data transition compression encryption workflow automation both in and outbound we also have you know alerting logs and reports that can go to individual users via email via sms or be directly put into a, a customer's scene uh, through the apis but actually go anywhere works on multi levels it'll work on any platform so whether you're working windows linux mac unix whatever go anywhere works on it It'll deal with all sorts of file types. So not, not just FTP. In fact, nobody uses FTP anymore that is serious about it. But SFTP, SCP, FTPS, AS234, uh, HTTPS, um, you know, it's it's there is nothing that it won't run on. We also work both on premise and in the cloud and have hundreds of connectors built into cloud applications so that you have instant access to it. It works across multiple databases and the workflow can go and pick up a work package from a SQL database, convert it into a DB2 file or an Oracle file and put it to another database. So it's not just moving the the files about it can actually have a complete workflow around uh, changing those those uh, the, the actual file types um, and we also have agents so this is not just an outbound product it's also an inbound product and that enables us to uh, work with third parties partners etc cetera, etc cetera. so go anywhere MFT does it have the orchestration? Yes, it does. Does it have the guaranteed file delivery? Absolutely. Does it have the secure information? Yes, all files are encrypted at flight and in rest. So at rest. So whether the files are static, whether they're moving, whatever you're doing with them, this is fully encrypted ASC, ASC 256 encryption. Um, it also we have the ability to accelerate large file transfers through a proprietary uh, acceleration technology and also to send extremely large emails uh, through a reverse proxy approach that we have um, where we're we're enabling uh, people to send 
you know, hundreds of gig of files and uh, uh, do it in a highly secure manner, but bypassing the traditional bottlenecks of the firewalls uh, uh, and the exchange server. And it's fully compliant. So we help companies ensure that they are compliant to a number of regulations, PCI, DSS, SOX, ISO, GDPR, HIPAA, those are just an example of the compliance things that we're able to produce. And there are full auditing and reports. So you can have automated reports coming straight in, one for the CFO, one for the CISO, one for the CTO. They are different. They focus on the elements that are important to those people. And what we're most proud about with Go Anywhere is that uh, it's been the number one product in managed file transfer for a number of years now, ahead of much, much larger companies who started off with legacy solutions that really you know, might not have changed so much in the last few years. Uh, so Go Anywhere is recognized as the market leader, and that's voted by users. So that's why we're incredibly, incredibly proud of that. So on that note, I'm going to hand over control to um, uh, to Shibu, and I'll let him take over from there. Thank you very much. Shibu, you have control. Yep. Uh, I think I don't have it. All right, I got the access now. Sorry, can you can you see the screen yes. now? Yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Go. Okay, so here let us look at the case studies. Some of the case studies we have. So mainly for the, this, we are concentrating on the BFSI or the banking sector. So we can see what are the inefficiency or what are the concerns or challenges faced by organizations. That is, organizations has to depend on scripting or manual intervention for any pushing or pulling your files from third parties. And again, human intervention is required for PGP encryption and also decryption. And uh, they also would need the in, in uh, intervention when it comes to the data translations between their uh, Excel files or between their databases. The legacy mode, we, can, we have also seen that there are no auto retries when there is a when there is a, uh, you know, a disruption or a data in the transfer of data and auditing is minimal and not centralized or alerted upon, which is a very important factor even in the PCI compliance because everything has to be completely audited. So the solution what we offer the Go Anywhere MFT, the Go Anywhere MFT has a centralized, is a centralized solution. So you have con complete control of your infrastructure and also the complete control of what is happening within your MFT and the data transfers. And for all these uh, banking sectors or the BFSI sectors, we can see that you know they mainly use the SFTP or FTPS protocols to transfer the data between third parties or for host-to-host -host file transfer. So using our solution or the Go Anywhere MFT, the automation of PGP encryption decryption, decryption can be achieved. The SFTP, FTPS transfers can be made easier. And the automated workflows, which is a very important factor, which eliminates the human intervention and the writing of scripts. Should go to the next slide, please. So another case study that we are going to discuss today is for the government and also for the enterprises. So issues we see with usually with the large enterprises is the limitation to share large files. We have come across it because you know we can see that our outlook will have a limitation on the uh, size of the files that we can transfer and there is no visibility to the file transfers that is being done 
that is because employees might be using various uh, various uh, solutions to transfer their files it can be anything like dropbox or vtransfer etc and another thing is the human intervention is to receive and process the files so the solution what we have offered with the modules that uh, we have offered uh, using the mft is the secure folders and secure mail which helps the users in accessing their uh, files or sending files or sending large files using the https protocol or using the web client they can also use the outlook plugin which is a very important and nice feature and it is easy to use and it shows so that it is complete end-to-end -end encryption then another feature is the secure forms using the secure forms they can upload documents <coughs> they can have a form inbuilt into their um, inbuilt into their website itself where you if they want to if the customers if their customers want to upload the documents they can upload that and also the complete uh, we can also create a complete custom created forms according to the customer requirement and on top of this we can also trigger some automation using a successful login or upon sending an email some automation or some triggers can be automated to perform some other task as well so that is it on the case studies that we have i am uh, shivo to you for the live demo and the case studies all right good afternoon all my name is shibu korean uh, i work as a senior technical consultant and uh, today i'm going to show you uh, or we will just discuss about few use cases and i will also go through a small live demo and show you how those use cases works so just to start with uh, you know we know that data is a very very important data is very critical you know but the the thing is that when we especially look into the data as an organization you might be already having the security layers to protect your data you might be putting all those data in, in the encrypted mode but the problems what when the problem happens is that when you start man, you know accessing your the files because the data cannot be in stale at all the times right so the access need to be every time so when users start accessing their files or there is a file transaction happening between server to server or between system to system you know so there is actually the more threat is coming into the picture now uh, when we talk about the data of course uh, you know even if you secure it and uh, through the encryptions but when you trust you know transactions are happening there is where we need to actually take more importance now just to start with uh, we know that cloud is very important because uh, in the future also many organizations might be moving to cloud but what, when you look into the flip side what is the security problems when you look into the cloud so there are a lot of cloud services as you know like dropbox or uh, you know google drive or OneDrive. there are a lot of cloud services are there but when you look into that of course they give you the protection where the data are encrypted and so that we you know sure your data is secure but when we look into deeper are we are these data secure even though we say that okay these data are encrypted but uh, the question is are these data secure because um, i would say that when we talk about encryption you know the data encryption is always secure as much as your encrypted keys are secure right this is exam this is for example let's say you want to log into a web portal and you give an authentication which is a username and password so if your password is more complex that is going to keep you know that is going to tighten your security now if this password is visible or someone has that someone can act as you and they can access your profile and they can take your data over there so when you keep your so the same logic actually happens in the encryption as well now when you talk about the encryption whatever key different key lengths we are talking about let's say AES. 128, 256 encryptions. So it will be only useful when your encryption keys are secure. If your encryption keys are not secure, someone can actually get those keys and they can actually decrypt those files. Uh, so that's why going over as, as an MFT solution, we are offering a complete private cloud to the organization. So we offer you two options. One is you can actually have uh, going anywhere as an on-premise, complete on-premise system. 
So that means this is a complete software solution, which you can install in different platform. We support all those different platforms like Windows, Linux, Unix, uh, you know. So you can actually install those, uh, install the software in those platform. And it can be as a complete on-premise and you can start accessing your files. You can share the files securely. That is one option we have. And second thing is that if you don't want to maintain your virtual systems and you want to move to cloud, of course, you can have a private cloud. So you can actually get the private cloud from Azure. You can have for other cloud, cloud as well. And you can deploy, go anywhere over there. So that means you have a full control over the system. All your data are fully secure. You have the encryption keys with you. Now that means whatever files, whatever encryption. So all the data which is in REST and transit is fully encrypted in, in going your MFT and encryption key, keys have been owned by you. So that means you can make sure that no one outside is having access to my data, no one access ha outside having my keys, all are secured within, within our organization. So that's a, that is one of the use cases as a private cloud we are offering um, to the organization. And coming to the second point where we talk about the publishing the internal share folders. So nowadays, especially at this pandemic situation, of course, users cannot go to the office. They cannot access their office computers. Of course, they might be stuck in some locations. They might be working from home. So the important thing is that how do you access your files, right? So when you go back to your, your systems, uh, your office computers already having map drives. You might be already having a net, network drives and your files folders all might be already there. And if you want to access those, you might be having a temporary option where a VPN connections can be given. So when you get a VPN connection, of course, uh, VPN is not actually restricting to particular folders. Of course, you can do more than that. M mostly you might be using an SMP protocol to access your files. So a lot of threats are there when, especially when we talk about uh, sharing the files through VPN or sharing the files, to accessing the files through the the SMB protocol. So that's why as a solution, uh, Goinier MFT is going to offer you a complete uh, web or an SFTP protocol for you so that all your current files and folders, that means whatever users you have, they might be already having their files, folders, which is there in their network, which is there in their office computers. You can simply publish all these files and folders through a web portal or through an SFTP protocol. So that means you can see from the screen in the left hand side, it's, it shows that uh, one of the map drive, which is a user's map drive. And in the right hand side, you can see that it, is, it has been changed to a web portal. So that means whatever files and folders you have in your network fold, you can seamlessly publish it through a web portal. And that can be accessible from wherever you are. You can be either access from your, from your home, your, your network, your different locations, different regions, and you can seamlessly work. You can access your files, you can upload your files, you can download your files, you can share your files between third parties. So we are giving a complete uh, publishing over the web. So I'm gonna show you how it looks like uh, when we talk about the publishing. So uh, as part of the demo purpose, I have a few systems just to make it ready to show you how it looks like. So I have my office computer, so you can see that this is my office computer. And generally I work through this computer, I do the activities uh, through that. And when I go to my folder, you can see that I have my map drives here and whatever files I generally access, all those files are already there mapped for me. And this mapping is already done based on my NTFS permission. So whatever the read rights permissions I have, so based on that, these permissions are already given. So when I go back, go to my folders, I have this. But because of the situation, I might not be able to access to that and do that. So I have completely published it through Going Anywhere MFT. So I'm going to show you now Going Anywhere interface. So this is Going Anywhere interface. And now this interface is fully customized, customizable based on your uh, requirements. So that means you can even change the logo. You can put your own disclaimers, private messages. Uh, you, can, you can change the background images, colors. So it is fully customizable. And you, it, you, know, you can change all those names you can fully customize as per your company logos and titles. Now, here the system is already possible to integrate with Active Directories or local authentication or SAML authentication. We support all those authentication methods. Now, I'm gonna log in here using an account called Quirion. And this is one of my AD account. So now you can see that when I log into my profile, I can access the same files, which you can see in my 
of his computer. So whatever files are here, you know, the same thing I can see from my web interface. So that means system is giving me the option to access my files, or if I want to download some files, I can go ahead and download those files. If I want to upload new files, I can go ahead and upload new files over here. Or if I want to share any files to third parties, I can go ahead, I can simply click on share with, I can put the email address of the concerned person, subject, the message, and what kind of permissions I want to give it over here. And I can give all those different options, I can simply share it to a third party person. So this is a very simple approach what we are actually offering. And the same thing, you can, it doesn't matter if you're logging from a web portal, or even you can also log in from any of the third party tools like WinSCP or, or FileZilla where you are actually dealing with FT, uh, no, SFTPs. So here also, I can go ahead, I can log in with my uh, system, I can access my file. The same way, whatever the virtual folders has been created, I can actually go ahead and access that. And here, uh, you know, we give the complete virtual grouping. So if you go to the, so this is the admin console where we actually do the configurations. So I'm going to show you just a quick show uh, to to make sure understand that uh, you know how a virtual group. So when you go to the user level, okay, so you can see that uh, you have the option where you can create virtual group. So let's say if I go back to Korean, I click on the account. So you can do the virtual grouping on a group level, or you can also do on a user level as well. So when I go back to the folder option. I can create, you know, that means the administrator can put different virtual folders based on that. So now if I have access to uh, five different network folders, accordingly, I can put, accordingly, admin can put actually uh, the, the files, the folder permissions, and the same NTFS permissions that will be maintained. So that means uh, you're not going to change anything in your network. You are doing the same thing, but at the same time, you are actually going and publishing those. So this is an example which I just wanted to show you as part of the, you know, uh, the publishing. So the the third use case which I would like to discuss is that when we talk about the large files. So as we discussed before, when we talk about the large files, of course, when you are going to transfer through your Outlook, you cannot because um, you, as per your security settings, maybe 10 MB, 12 MB, or 15 MB depends on how much uh, your security settings is been applied the based on based on the, uh, okay based on that actually the users can actually uh, you know transfer the files so now what is the solution for that you need to otherwise rely on any other third party systems like um, you know cloud systems and you need to actually sh share the files to that or when it comes to the sensitive files let's say financial related files or uh, some kind of uh, uh, rfp tenders so now how do you make sure that all those files are securely sent, shared? Now, we know that when you're going to share it through the emails, of course, there are a lot of attacks. We know that daily it is happening through the emails, like phishing attacks, impersonation attacks, which is actually kind of man in middle and trying to uh, access the files and trying to, you know, may, uh, they are trying to impersonate and they are trying to do kind of a threat towards the organization. Now, what is the solution for that? So the solution is very simple. We have as a going your mft solution we offer you a complete solution for that so we have something called secure file i mean secure mail so through secure mail you can actually send links email links to the third parties and it is going to be a complete end-to-end -end encryption that means that only the user who is going to share the file and the recipient who is going to receive the file can only see and access the files so in between this is it is going through a complete end-to-end -end encryption so you can see that the employee who is going to share the file, the moment when he is going and uploading a file, it gets automatically encrypted. And a link will be sent to the recipient through the through your email system. That means your email system is not sending any file. It is just simply sending only a link. And when the recipient gets that link, and when he click on that link, the you know it is connecting back to the GoAniverse MFT server, and then it is downloading the file from there. So you know through this process itself, automatically the encryption and decryption is happening so this it's this makes sure that you can actually very peacefully without any doubts you can share all your files to go anywhere that will make sure that only the user and the recipient who is going to access can only see the file and no one else can touch into that so let me show you a uh, use uh, let me show you how it looks like so when we go to the same portal web user portal and when you go to the mail option, so we have an option called mail. It's exactly same like how you send an email. 
So you have something called compose. You can go ahead and you can select the email address, address which you would like to send it. If you want to put a CCBCC, you can do that. You can uh, put your uh, subject, a body. And here you can go ahead and browse the file, whatever file you would like to share it. And here, when you're sharing, you can have a lot of different settings over there. You can put an expiry for the package to make sure that that package is only packet gets automatically expired within this date. So if you mention five days, seven days, that link will automatically get expired within that date. You can also enable a read receipt option to make sure that uh, once the user download that file, you will automatically get a notification showing that the user has downloaded. So you can make sure that the recipient receives that file. And when you try to send the file, system will give you more options. How much limitation need to be given for the download? So now when you're sharing a file, you can say that, okay, I want that only one time download. So that means if he is trying to forward to someone else, you can actually simply stop it. And you can also enable allow reply option to make sure that uh, you are sharing a file to a third party person. And if you want that third party person to send it back to you, maybe after an updation, you can actually, you can actually enable this allow reply option. That means within that email chain itself, the system will allow a recipient to attach the same uh, a different file or same file and send it back to you. We can also enable password protection for the link to make sure that when a user clicks on the link, he will be asked for a password. And after putting the password, only system will decrypt that uh, you know email uh, or that link. And here we can have two options here. The, uh, the system itself can generate a password and send us a separate email or a uh, user can set a password by themselves again that can be shared separately. And here you can also opt either via email or SMS. So if you mention the SMS, an OTP will be sent via SMS. Or if you choose email, it will be sent via email. So this is the web portal option which is available for the users through which they can actually securely share the files. We also, also have an option called request file. So request file also some, sometimes very important. Like you want to, you, you know, one of your third party person is there and he want to share your big file or large file. You can simply put his email address. You can simply put whatever email address he has, and you can go ahead and you can put a, a sent so that the user or the recipient will get a link, and using that link they can upload the files and send it back to you. So one of the another advantage within the secure mail is that we have the same options within your email Outlook itself. That means we have a plugin. Okay, so when you go ahead, when you go and uh, try to compose something. So you can see that all these options comes over here. So that means you don't need to even go to the web portal. Within the email chain itself, you can go ahead and do that. So now when you go and upload it down or attach a file, you can see that it attached automatically as a text file. But at the same time, if you go higher and attach as a file, you see that at the moment when you click on attach, it is getting encrypted. So the moment it is, uh, you know, apply, so it is fully encrypting the entire to from subject, body, attachment, everything will be encrypted into a link and that link will, link will be shared to a third party person. All right, so this is uh, uh, just a demonstration when it comes to the Outlook plugin. So here you have two options, either through the web portal or through the email Outlook. And the fourth use case I would like to discuss is the, in a, the, the file collaboration, which you can do it from anywhere. So go in your gives, you know, go in your understand the pain point of users because of course, uh, the users, when you look into the user point of view, they can, they might be accessing, they might be from home, they might be from different locations, from office. So we give you different options to do the collaboration. So that means we have a mobile app option, we have an interface option, and we have a desktop client option. That means from anywhere, you can do the syncing of the files and you can access the files. So whatever the files you have in your desktop, the same files you'll be able to see in your interface, you'll be able to see from your uh, mobile uh, you know, app. The same thing you will be able to see from all e each other. So if you upload a file from your mobile app, the same thing you will be able to see from your desktop as well as from your interface. And here you can do a complete collaboration. Now, for example, let's say you want to, uh, you're going to start a project or you want to uh, do a, uh, you know, some kind of an RFP center, for example. Now you create a folder. And now when you create a folder, you're going to invite your uh, colleagues. Now, when you invite, you will say that, okay, I'm going to invite uh, my colleague uh, one, and you can decide what kind of permission you want to give it. You, you want to make sure that only he should be a viewer so that he can only view the files, or you want to make him as a collaborator. You want to make him as a you know, contributor. So you can have different roles configured over there. So accordingly, the, those persons, those parties will be able to access 
and have permissions over there. So all these different options are available for the users to access and we give a complete enterprise syncing option for that. And when you look into the security point, of course, we also have a device, uh, you know, remote wiping options. All the files uploaded are fully encrypted with AUS-256. So we take care about all the security layers. So even if a user's mobile phone is lost, you know, we have the options where uh, admin can automatically go and wipe out all those information from the phone. So if I just show you a demonstration for that. So again, when we go back to the interface, so you can see GoDrive. So this is the uh, option where you can see it provides you an interface. It, it provides you a desktop client and it also provides you a, a mobile app. So if I go back to my system, I can also see uh, a client in my machine. This is my client. And I can see that the moment when I go to that, automatically uh, a map drive will be created. So you can see there, so if I go to the uh, my system, you can see there is a map drive is automatically created. So the moment I install the agent, there will be a map drive created. So now I can go ahead and put my files over here. When I put the files over here, automatically you will see that the files will get uh, populated to my interface as well as to my mobile app. So let me let's put, for example, I'm, I'm going here. I'm just putting two files here. So you see that uh, the moment when you start uploading the files, you can see the system will keep on syncing back to the interface. And you will see that automatically when you go to the interface, you can see that all those files which has come over there. So that means the same thing, when you upload something over here, the same thing happens. So when you go ahead and you want to just upload something over here, you will see the option and immediately you will see that when you go back to your, when you go back to the uh, to your client, you will see the same thing over here in Geo. So this makes sure that you have a complete, um, you know, Thinking over there. All right, so let's go to the next uh, use cases. All right, so this is most of uh, this is one of the main uh, use cases which I would like to discuss. Especially, uh, Serin has talked about the uh, case studies, especially for the enterprises, where we are talking about uh, manual tasks and scripts. So. As, as an organization, you might be having, uh, you know, your employees might be doing a lot of repetitive tasks, you know, manual tasks. So for example, they might have to, um, you know, log into different systems manually. They need to pull the file from there or they need to push some files to third parties. Or when you look into a banking banking kind of a scenario, there will be banks need to talk to each bank, right? Bank A need to talk to bank B, bank B need to talk to bank C. So there will be a bank to bank communication will be there. Or if you talk about bank to central bank communication or bank to other exchange, other enterprises, government. So a lot of interactions are happening between banks and uh, you know, third parties. So basically you need to have a lot of files being sent it from there. You need to upload some files to them. You know, there are a lot of applications are there which is actually processing certain files. And when those post files are processed, you need to actually push it to another SFTP server. So a lot of use cases are there. So probably now you might be relying on manually doing that. That means your, your users, they might be manually, whenever the file is ready, they might be manually connecting to an SFTP server and they are pushing the files over there. Or whenever the file is ready in one of your uh, uh, SFTP server, they might be manually going and uh, downloading it or you want to do uh, some encryptions, decryptions, uh, sipping, unsipping. Uh, so all of these kind of things might be done manually. Or the second option is that you might be relying on some kind of a script. So the problem with the scripts is that, you know, uh, out of the calls which we get from many customers is that when you go and uh, rely on small, you know, bits and pieces of script, the problem is that you won't be able to monitor fully. So you don't have a centralized console which says that, or all you know which can monitor all your scripts so when one of the scripts if it fails to give a notification how do you make sure that that transaction has happened properly or when you go and uh, you know some of the scripts stop working how do you understand that whether that job was successfully done or not so you have to keep on monitoring that you need to manually do a lot of things to you know maintain that script or another problem is that the, the developer who has designed that script maybe if he leave the company how do you maintain that now you might, you know, maybe it might be already in the production. And now if you want to see, if you want to do some updations, changes over there, maybe that developer only knows that, or he has created the course, 
So it will be difficult or you might be not uh, comfortable to go and do the changes. So these are, there are a lot of problems when you come across the scripts, when it comes to the manual tasks. And that's why as a solution, what we are offering you is a complete automation. So that means go anywhere as a solution is a, it comes with a very simple interface, drag and drop options. That means you don't need to be a, a developer. You don't need to be a person who knows different languages to do this. A, even a non-technical guy can go ahead and create a project by themselves. So it's basically a simple logic which you need to think of. Let's say your job is to just go to an SFTP, pick the file, put it to a different location. Let's see if this is your job or this is your requirement. We can simply come to go anywhere. We already have all those predefined tasks. So we have over 60 plus unique tasks are there for each tabs. You can go ahead. You can simply select which task you can create. You can drag and drop and system will automatically create all the XML rules and then you can start uh, you know, uh, running the jobs. Okay, so it's a very simple process for that and you don't need to have any kind of scripting knowledge. You don't need to have any kind of uh, codes for that and using a script using the system itself you can build it now i'm going to show you how it looks like so mostly the the projects and related stuff things you are actually doing in the admin console okay so the user interface user interface is only for the users for accessing the files and related stuff now for the admin console is where you go ahead and do the project creation and uh, configuration uh, related things now when you go to the uh, projects okay so before you go to the projects, you can first go and create resources. Okay, so we have an n, n number of platform, you know, supported. So we supported a lot of different cloud systems. We supported SSH, SFTP systems. We have network share folders. We have databases, uh, you know. So first of all, before you go ahead and create a project, you can go ahead and create a resource first. So if you want to add a resource, you can simply go here. You can say that, uh, you know, if you just go ahead, uh, you can give a name. And you can say that, okay, I I want to give, this is my IP address, this is the username, it's a password, or if you have some SSH keys, you can give, um, put those keys and you can go ahead and do a test and you can make sure that uh, the connection is, um, you know, uh, is through, everything is fine. So the first process is to create a resource. So once you create a resource, you can use this resource in any projects when you're creating a logic, okay? And we support all those different resources as I mentioned. Now, once the resource is down, second thing is you go ahead and create a project. Okay, now I will show you one simple project here just to give an idea about uh, how the projects can be created. So I have created a project called SFTP project here. Okay, so here what I'm, I'm, what I'm telling here, what I'm uh, showing to the system is that. So before I just go and explain here, let me show you something very interesting in the left hand side. So you can see here, as I said, there are almost, uh, I think more than 60 plus different tasks are already there. Okay, so when you go, we have a lot of cloud connectors there. When you go to the databases, when you talk about the compressions, data translations, or email notifications you want to send, it, or file system you want to create, you want to copy some files, delete some files, make directories, merge files. So we already have all those tasks are there. It's just a matter of just simply drag and drop. So wherever you want to place it, just simply take it and place it. That's it. So you want to make you want to see that okay before I want to go through the steps I want to create a directory here just simply go ahead place it that's it or you want to merge something you can do that or you want to move a file it's just a matter of placing the uh, the task here and mentioning the source and destination where need to be placed similarly you have also different options here we we suppose all those different protocols like AS2 AS3 AS4 FTP FTPS HTTP HTTPS PESIT S3 SCP SFT we suppose all those major protocols. And when the integration side, we also support commands. That means you can execute the commands, you can execute SSL commands, we support all those. You can have loops created. You can say that certain if loops, while loops, you can create, you can say that if this condition is matched, then go ahead. Or if condition is not matched, then abort this. So different conditions you can uh, uh, create with the loops. You can have miscellaneous. Uh, you can even have MQ integration. We support message queuing options. We support PGP encryption, so you don't need to create manually the encryptions, decryptions, and all system is already having all those predefined. It's just a matter of going and creating a project and it's done. Uh, we in fact have many APIs integrations. You can call REST API or SOAP API, and you can call to different applications and you can actually create a project. 
So now let me quickly show you how the project is designed and then I will show you the demo for that. So here what I've done is I simply create a timestamp and the timestamp what I said is I put a name for the timestamp and I just say that it should be with D M M Y Y. So I'm saying that when I'm when uh, when this name comes it will be binded with uh, today's date with month and year. Okay, and then what I'm doing is that I'm going and creating a directory. So I'm saying that before doing the file transaction, okay, go and create a, uh, a folder in this particular uh, path and with today's timestamp. So this is why I created a timestamp here with this curl date. And then I'm going to the directory. I'm saying that create a folder with today's timestamp. I'm also putting, uh, I also wanted to have an archive folder because I want to make sure a copy is there in my archive folder. So I'm going and creating something in my archive folder as well. And then I'm going in calling an SFTP. So when I'm going and calling an SFTP, I can go here, I can bind the resource. So if you remember the previous slide, which I, previous option I talked about the resources, here is where you're going and calling the resource, which resource you would like to call. And when you, when you attach an SFTP server, you have different options here. You can get files, pull files, change directories, move files, a lot of different options are available here. Here I have selected a get file. So I'm saying that pick a file from there, put it to this destination. And then I'm saying that, automatically delete that from the source and then I am putting a copy to my archive folder and then I am going to send a notification over there okay so what I have done is this project I am actually kickstarting or starting through a, a, a trigger so in, in, a, in another slide I will talk about the tri triggers so basically I am actually running this triggers and using a trigger I am actually kickstarting a project so what I have done is I have a different user so I am in the real use case is that um, there will be third parties, so I have published my system to third parties. So I have an account given to Bank A. So Bank A, basically, what they do is, when, whenever they want to upload a file, they will simply upload the file to their uh, home directory. So home directory is that if you go to the GoAnywhere server, so you can see that for each users there will be a folders, and each folders will be their own home directory. Okay. So now the moment if I place a file to this, you will see that the file will come over there because this is in my home directory. So what I have created in this project is that I say that whenever someone uploaded uh, a file, I'm saying that create a directory to the uh, to the uh, my one of my folder, one of my archive folder, copy the file and then send a notification. So I'm going to show you that. So I have put uh, you know one of the server. I have created a folder called Bang A. Now you can monitor this. So the moment a user upload in his profile, automatically system will go and create a folder here. It will pull the files here and it will be automatically replicated. So let me go ahead. Just try to upload some files. So I'm just uh, choosing some different files here. I'm just uploading it. So you'll see that the moment I upload, you will see that a folder has been created. The file has come over here. So this is automatically getting triggered. So that means you can have any kind of automations here. And you will see that after doing this process, I should get a notification saying that the file has come over there. Okay, so now, so this is a very simple approach I have done with the trigger. So I can move the files, I can copy the files, whatever different jobs I want to do it, I can see. So I started getting the alert. I'm getting that, you know, you have the, uh, the files. Uh, this informer, you have received a file from this party. Okay, uh, so let me just quickly jump to the next slide. All right, so the other use case which I would like to discuss is about the PGP encryption decryption. So we know that PGP encryption decryption is sometimes very uh, crucial and sometimes time, you know, time consuming process because when you might be getting as, a, as an organization, okay, whether it's a government or enterprise or banks, uh, you know, as an organization, sometimes you want to share files to third parties or sometimes third parties need to share you the files. Probably they might be doing a PGP encryption and sending you the encrypted files. Also, you need to have the decryption keys. You need to manually go and decrypt that files. Or sometimes you want to share a file to third parties. You need to go ahead and you need to actually uh, encrypt it and manually send to them, right? So here I'm going to talk about a complete automation. You don't need to do all these things. You can simply create a project and go anywhere. And then go anywhere is going to do everything every time whenever you need. So let me just show you similar like that. I have a, a um, you know I have a project created for PGP encryption decryption. So let me just first show you the decryption part. So I have something called PGP decryption here. 
So what I have done here is that, um, so I simply create a PGP decrypt. So I have a, uh, you can see here PGP option is there. I can simply drag and drop this option. So I put that option here. I'm saying that take the key from this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this key management. So this is a key management system. So this itself says that when you don't have a system like this, mostly the users will be having the keys by themselves. So which is against your compliance regulation, right? So here you don't need to think about that because you have a centralized system and all your keys, SSH keys, your certificate keys, your PGP keys, everything will be centrally located in this key management system. And here even we can have integration with uh, HSM systems and you can even have the keys rotated through that aspect. So now what I'm doing is that I'm saying that whenever someone uploaded, uh, you know, I'm put it for something specific to bank A. So I'm saying that if bank A is uploading an encrypted file, automatically go ahead and decrypt that file and place that file in this folder. Okay, so I have a folder in my network drive, which is called um, decrypt folder, for example. And I'm going to keep it clean. So I have a folder here. So I'm saying that if someone is sending me an encrypted file, automatically decrypt it and put the raw file here. So I'm going to show you that. So let me log in as a user here. So first of all, as a third party person, I am a third party person, for example. Now I need to have any kind of tools, for example, let's say uh, going over itself is having a, an encrypted file, uh, you know, um, a PGP tool for that. So as a third party person, what I'm doing, going to do is I'm just selecting my file. So I just go to the demo. I have a file here. So I'm going and encrypting that file. So you can see that the file has been encrypted. So if I go back to my demo, so I can see that two files. One is my actual file and second is my encrypted file. Right. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to upload this encrypted files to a, a third party person. So what I do is I go ahead, click on upload and I'm choosing my demo. And choosing that encrypted file here, I'm uploading that. So you'll see that the moment I upload it, you will see that, you know, it will automatically go and Right, uh, sorry, uh, it's a different user I have created for that. So I think I have used a different user for that. So I'm gonna upload a file, my upload file here. So you see that automatically the moment when I uploaded the encrypted file. So you see that this is an encrypted file, right? So the moment I upload the encrypted file, system automatically detect that and it went ahead and decrypted that file and that file is automatically placed in my network folder. So you can see here now the file has been decrypted and I can see the actual file here. So this is a complete automation. You don't need to do anything. The system will automatically do the encryption for that, a uh, decryption for that. Similarly, I also wanted to do the encryption. So in a normal scenario, if I want to share someone up an encrypted file, I have to use the same tool and I have to do that, right? So instead of that, what I have created is I create a simple algorithm here. I say I create a folder here. Then I ask all my users who are want to share files to uh, uh, bank A, just put your file over here and system will automatically encrypt that. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm just picking the same file. For example, this is the actual file. I'm putting this file over here. Now, what, what, is, what will happen is that I put a one minute frequency over here. So what happens is this system will automatically, every one minute, it will go and monitor this folder, encrypted folder and it will look if there is any file is there or not. If there is any file is there, system will automatically go ahead and encrypt that file and the actual file will be automatically deleted. Okay, so that means you are, uh, it's very clear. So you can, you don't need to go and do all these mechanisms. It's just simply place your file in one of the folder and system will automatically do that for you. And you don't need to know the decryption keys or encryption keys, you don't need to do that. You see that now so the file automatically gets encrypted. So now when you try to open that, is fully encrypted okay so this is an example uh, for the pgp now let me go ahead and show you the uh, other use cases so another one of the use cases is the uh, automated database queries you know so most of your uh, organizations uh, you know their database team your application teams they might be dealing with the database queries and all so sometimes they need to manually connect to your database they need to run some queries over there they need to pull pull some select 
you know, select information. They need to insert some to the de different database. So they might be doing all those different tasks manually. So we have a complete automation for that. So you don't need to do all these kind of database translations, database uh, insertions, queries, you know, manually. So you can go ahead and you can simply create, um, you know, you can simply go ahead and you can actually go ahead and create a simple task here and then a system will automatically take care of that. So I'm going to show you. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you that quickly. So when you go here, I have just created some, uh, I have something called DB, DB to DB. So here, what, I'm, uh, what I have mentioned here is that I have simply, I mentioned here, so I'm just choosing one of my database. I have a database one. So what I'm doing is connect to database one, run this select query. And then when I'm seeing this, put this output in this variable. And then what I'm doing is connecting to database two. And I'm saying that insert this value to, to this database. Now, if you see here, I have database one and I have database two. So you see that if you look into the, uh, the option here, so I have a value here. But at the same time, if I look into my database too, I don't have a value here. Right. So what I'm going to do is I am simply going and execute that. Now you see that automatically the value has been connected and it is just pushed over there. Now if I go ahead and try to select that, so I can that the, the value has been populated. So you can create schedules for that. So you can go ahead, you can run the schedules actually to uh, you know do this kind of automation. So similarly, you can do the, uh, you can automate the data translations. So I think we are almost, uh, the time is consumed. So I will take uh, around five to six minutes to just complete other use cases. Uh, so just to talk about the data translate, the same thing, we can also do the data translations. So where you can, you might be having different kinds of files like CSV files, Excel files, and a lot of different files. And you can automatically do the translations from one file to another file, or from one file to database, or from database to a file. So you can you can say that read a file from an Excel file, take the content, and then insert to a database. Or you can say that run a database query, take the value from there, insert to an, a CSV file, and send it to a location. So you can do that. Okay. Similarly, uh, so let me just quickly show that how it looks like. So when you go ahead, I have a create I have a project for that. So I have, what I have mentioned here is that something called DB to CSV email. So what I have done here is that I am saying that connect your database, retrieve an information. So I got the PGP file here, write it to a database. And then I'm saying that write this information to this Excel file and send a notification. So when I go ahead and execute that, you will see that automatically system will go and run a query and it will write this information to a, one of my CSV file and that CSV file will be based. So if I go, I have a folder here. So if I go to there, you can see a file has been automatically created. So these kind of uh, automations you can easily do through the, uh, you know, uh, through the Gonyo RMF3 system. Similarly, one more use case, very interesting use case is the secure forms. Now, secure forms, we know that, uh, you know, nowadays, a uh, lot of people are actually still with the paper-based approach where you want, you might, uh, you know, you know, you might actually give the papers or paper-based forms for the employees to fill them information, some feedbacks, some uh, collecting some information and all those things. So you can completely move from that paper-based approach to the digital forms. So that means we will give you a complete uh, a digital kind of secure forms so that users can go ahead they can complete uh, that uh, you know they can complete the information from that and you can use this for different automation purpose okay so that means you can completely move from a paper based approach to a digital forms and this digital forms can be fully designed by yourself so that means you can go to the uh, secure forms we have a secure forms option you can decide your own forms so i have created let's say something called annual form Okay, so here I am designing by myself. So I'm saying that I want some checkbox, some dates, some Dropbox, some file approach. So I have created some annual list based on that. So when I'm choosing each annual log, I can make different options I can set over there. So I have created a secure forms and I can publish through a web interface or through a user interface. So I have in the user interface itself, I can go here as a user. 
I can fill all those information, whatever, let's say I want to uh, give an annual, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, leave, annual leave to my, um, to my manager. So I can go ahead, I can choose a, a number, I can mention the details, all this information. I can go ahead and submit it. So what happens is that automatically this will go to my manager. So manager can review that and he can probably approve or reject it. So similarly, I can actually design any kind of uh, secure forms like this and I can push it to users to get the feedback from them. All right, uh, so these are some of the use cases. So just to uh, quickly go through the other use cases, we also have integrations with the cloud systems. So we, you can talk to one, if you want to integrate with the Google Drives, Dropbox, OneDrive. Uh, so we have ready connectors for that. And some of your files are already there and you want to push the files, pull the files from there. We already have an integration for that. And we can also support you for executing the command. So this is, this is also very uh, useful because you might be having some batch scripts. You might be having some native commands, you know, and you want to actually go ahead and execute the scripts based on a schedule. So you can do that. So you can simply go to the go anywhere. You can create a schedule and you can say that go and run this batch script daily at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. So based on your requirement. So we have a complete support for any native commands, SSL commands. And we have very, you know, we have a very good options to kickstart the project. So we have three options available, which is called scheduler, monitor and trigger. So scheduler is something which you can schedule on a daily base, hourly based or weekly base. You can say that run this project day, you know, uh, on a based on a time frame, and system will go ahead and do that. That means you don't need to rely on Windows task schedulers or you don't need to rely on any other third party system. System itself is having an inbuilt uh, capability for that. Okay, and you also have a monitor. So monitor is, can basically monitor the folders and, and based on a condition, it can actually take an action. So it can say that when a file is created, go and kickstart a project or a file is modified, go and kickstart a project. So you can have certain conditions set for the monitor. And the last term is called a trigger. So trigger can also help you in kickstarting a project. That means you can say that whenever a user upload a file, go and st start a project. So you saw that one of the example I show you in the workflow, so when I uploaded a file, automatically a project has been kickstarted. So these are the different options available for you to kickstart a project. And on top of that, we also provide command lines. We also provide APIs to, uh, to, to run the projects. And one of the other option, what we have is the gateway component. So basically when you go ahead and publish your files, of course you need to also look into the security uh, you know, layer. So that means you can say that you know, uh, whenever um, someone is actually uh, upload, you know, when someone is publishing uh, the MFT application, you need to have a gateway component. So go anywhere is having a gateway component for that. So that means the gateway component is going to be the front end for the user. So that will be sitting in the, your DMZ zone. All the outside communication is coming from your firewall, which gets terminated in the DMZ. And you don't need to open any ports towards the no need of any incoming ports to be open. So that says that your application is not at all exposed and your gateway comp and the gateway component is going to handle all the transaction which is coming from outside and which is going to, uh, from incoming as well as for the outgoing. And the last thing is the last point which I would like, like to discuss is about the auditing part. So that means as a, as a solution, we provide you the complete auditing. So we give you the, a centralized system which will give you who, everything, who access what, where and when. So whatever file transactions are happening, whatever users are, uh, transactions are happening, automations are happening, you have a full view, full visibility into what is happening in your network. So that you know that these are the users are uploading, these are the transactions are happening, these are the projects being executed. So you have a complete visibility into all your activities. And we even have a predefined report for that to make sure that you can schedule the reports, you can have an, uh, you know, have a complete visibility into that. So that says, um, I have gone through all the, I think we just covered almost 14 use cases, which I think is uh, relevant at this point of time or, or even when you look into the future. So any, any questions if you have uh, related to this, please uh, put it in the chat so that we'll be able to address that. Hi everyone, please let us know if there is any questions so that we can address that as well. 
Shibu, in the meanwhile, can you pass on the control back to Gitin? Yes. Uh... So one of the questions we have. Can the report be scheduled? Sorry, I, uh, Sarin, can you repeat? I just uh, lost that. Yes, yeah, so I, what I was, uh, there is a question. So what are the different types of reports and can the reports be scheduled? Yes, of course, we have uh, different kind of audit logs. So that says that uh, all the, you can go through the audit logs and you can see all those different kind of reports through that. And on top of that, we have a predefined report as well. So that comes as a, uh, gen, uh, you know, as an on demand, you can go ahead and generate those reports. We in fact has a PCI DSS report. So that means you can go ahead and uh, do a benchmarking benchmark between the PSS standard and your, uh, you know, the go anywhere system. So this will make sure that you are comply with the PC, PCI DSS standard. And, um, you know, this, is, this will be very useful when, especially when uh, auditors are asking for the report, you can simply go ahead and generate the reports. So yes, uh, we have a, a number of reports along with the solutions so that you can on demand and go and generate those. So the next question we have here is, do you have plans to support Lotus Notes email systems? Uh, see, basically uh, when it comes to the, we, uh, the plugins, we are actually supporting uh, Outlook at the moment. And uh, for the Lotus Note, um, uh, we, I'm not sure we, we uh, you know, we have to actually check in the roadmap if we have something to that. And uh, we can actually cross check and back to you on that. Okay, there are a couple of few other questions, just a second. So there is a question like, is the solution on-prem or cloud-based? So the solution is basically a software-based solution. So that can be deployed in any platform like Windows, Linux, Unix platform. So that means uh, you can have it as a complete on-premise. That means you can install in any of your platform in your on-premise system. So, and at the same time, if you would like to go to a private cloud, if you have a private cloud, you can install over there as well. So we support both options. Okay. Uh, okay, another question is, if a mail receiver or the recipient downloaded the file, will he be able to send a copy to a different person? So there is where you can have a limitation. So we have an option called download limitation, which you can send it so that you, which can be pushed it centrally or by the user. So if you're going to push it by the centrally, that means you can say that only one download at a time. So that means if I share a file to a third party person, and if that third party person has access that, and if he's forwarding to uh, one of his colleague, you know, it, it, it simply don't work. So you can have a limitation set for the, the package link or for the download. Okay, and then the question that we have here is, do we have any battle cards with the competition in the market? Yeah, so of course we have, uh, you know, when you look into uh, MFTs, of course there are different competitors, you know that. Um, so we have, some, you know, compared to all those competition, we have some very unique points. And if you have, if you need something, of course we can help you with that. Okay, and there is a question about APIs. Uh, so when you say about APIs, uh, can we set it up for Jira uh, sort of tools? Yeah, so for Jira, Jenkins, so and also it's just a complete, we support uh, SOAP and, uh, you know, SOAP and REST APIs. So if you have any systems like uh, Jira or Jenkins or any other uh, platform which uses an API to, uh, you know, of course, uh, we can give our open APIs to you. So one option is that you can actually use this API in your tool and use that to connect to go anywhere mft or uh, we can also we also support api we can also talk back to your api as well so if you have an api we can also create a workflow to talk to your api also so both options we support the next question that we have is how do we map the network drive to the go drive or vice versa so basically the mapping is happening in the uh, the first option which i just showed to you is the basic uh, option which is a file so this is basically we are doing in the uh, user level okay so when you go to the users or you can actually create virtual folders over there and when you're going and creating a virtual folders you can actually show the path of your network drive and that will be applied uh, that virtual folder that path will be applied to the user 
So you can, we also have an XML file over there. So if you have uh, uh, more number of users, you can map all those virtual folders for each users and you can simply import as an XML file so that uh, all those users will be imported automatically in one go and all those NTFS permissions, virtual files, folders will be mapped automatically for the user. So there is a question about the agents. So agents, is it possible to view the entire file structure on the client side? That is for the agents. Yeah, so basically the agents, why we need an agent is basically to do the remote uh, project callings, uh, you know, so for example, you have a, a different branch, let's say, and you want to do some kind of an activity over there and you want to pull the files to the central location. So you can have an agent installed over there in different locations or different entities. So what that agent basically do is that it will, it is actually a small version of MFT. Okay, so it can fit into the your branch and whatever different activities you want over there, it can be your PGP encryption, decryption, your uh, rotations, monitoring, or you can create, you know, you can actually show what kind of, you know, so when you're creating an agent, you can give permission to which all the drives that agent should be able to talk. And accordingly, whenever a file comes over there, you can go ahead and pull the files and push it to centrally. So agents, when you're installing the agent, at that time, you are actually deciding what are the drives, what are the folders that agent can have access to that? And based on that, it can actually do the job, you know, based on that, uh, uh, that permission. Okay. So, uh, we're just checking if there are more questions. So let us know if you have more questions. If, as I said before, if you have any questions that are not answered uh, here, we can also uh, get in touch with us and we'll get back to you on that as well. So thank you all. Thank you for attending the session. We believe that the session was very helpful and also helped you in understanding the solution, the Go Anywhere MFT solution as such. So if you have any queries or clarifications or demo, demo requirements, you can of course get back to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Thank you all. Thanks for joining the session. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye. I'll now close bye -bye. the session.